anybody able to hop up into the stream yards, PJ said. Did you post a link? Mm hmm. Okay. Hey, beauties. Hi. Hello. <laughs> okay, see, so you gotta say something, honey. Okay. Hi, everybody. Um, <laughs> Today we're covering the case on Donald Gaskin, AKA Pee Wee, the serial killer. Today we're covering the case on Donald Gaskin. And we've got Georgia Peach here with us. Georgia, can you explain um, how you know about this case? Um, my granddaddy and Pee Wee Gaskins was good friends. Well, not good friends, but friends growing up. So I know him through my, my granddad. He used to come wow. around. Hold on a What's second. That? I think it's... um. I walked past that room. I gotta I stop sharing. Like oh, okay. Hi, Someone. Mr. Sex Money Murder. Someone's talking. Hey, BJ. Hey, Tabby. Hey, Eva. OG Kush one. Salute to the chat. Thank you BJ, for, for coming. We had someone make that for us. I don't know how to do it. C doesn't know how to do it either. <laughs> BJ was asking um us to help him. Yeah. I think make an intro, but I don't, BJ, if I knew how to do it, I would help you, but I don't, I don't know how. Okay, so. So, so maybe we could start by um, sharing his info when he was born, where he was born. A little bit of that first. Okay, so. Um, In the notes. Haskins was born. Um, he was on born March in Florence 13th. County, uh, 90, 1933, and he was born in Sumter, South Carolina. Um, and he got his nickname Pee Wee, uh, because he, he was pretty small. He was yeah. what five foot, Georgia, you said, yeah, maybe five foot, five, five two, and that's that's at max eight, max height, so. Maybe 100 pounds, 120 pounds at the most. Very tiny guy. And um, how do 
How do you think that he became the way he was, like becoming a serial killer and so violent? I'm yeah. not really sure, but they said at the age of one, he drunk a bottle of kerosene. And after that, he started having convulsions. Uh, yeah, convulsions, seizures, whatever you may want to call it back in them days. Yeah. And after that, like I said, he was pretty whacked in the head. As How he old got older, he got worse. Him? How old was yeah. I when I met him? Yeah. To be honest with you, I don't remember ever like meeting him for the first time. All my, you know, from the time I was born to the time he went to prison, mm -hmm. I can remember him coming around periodically. And you know, I'm I'm not saying like once a week or whatever, but maybe once a month, uh, seven eight times a year, something like that. He would pop up, and uh, him and my granddad, like I said, they might talk about uh, working on a car or going hunting somewhere or farming something it you know they just had conversations it wasn't nothing never serious or deep or nothing like that um when he came over us kids was made to go inside i don't know if my granddad just sent something or if that's just the way it was mm -hmm. but uh, my granddad would tell all of us kids to go inside until he left and that's what we done you know so so tell us a little bit because it says that as a child he was uh troubled well, he was he was abused um, from probably the time he was born. Uh, he said he was abused. Um, he didn't know who his dad was. His mom would bounce from man to man. So the man that raised him that he thought was his dad, the first seven, eight years of his life, come to find out, wasn't even his dad. So yeah, his, that might explain why he was beat like he was. Yeah, his stepfather beat him. Um, his stepfather also beat his own kids, so it's not like, you know, he oh, okay. was singled out. Oh, I see. He beat his own kids also. Um, uh, he found out that wasn't his dad. Uh, let's see, he, he got hooked up with some other kids that <clears> was <throat> problems, and they started out, you know, uh, like small robberies, burglaries. It was little, I ain't gonna say simple crimes, but some of the less serious crimes. And then mm -hmm. as he got older, the crimes got worse. And his first kill was not until he got into prison. When he got to prison was his first murder. And the reason he committed his first murder, he said, is because he was bullied and he wanted people to fear him. He wanted to be the mm -hmm. boss. Yeah. Um, so he went and killed a guy in prison so people wouldn't bully him and break him and, and stuff like that. And then when he got out of prison from that, it just, he said that he had a taste for blood and he got these feelings. And when he, his mind, when his mind got to going, the only way he could ease his mind and thoughts was to go kill someone. So he would just keep killing and killing and killing. Um, so I, I was also reading that he dropped at a school very young. Yeah. 11 yeah, yeah mm -hmm. like the age of 11 he dropped out of school mm -hmm. and he become like working on cars uh he worked on tobacco farms um different actually different kind of farms not just tobacco farms and then from him working on tobacco farms and stuff like that he learned that he could make more money by setting these barns on fire you know, with these crops in it. So he For started an insurance, an insurance job, basically. Exactly. You know, claiming insurance. So he would set the barns on fire and burn up the tobacco, wheat, corn, whatever it may be. So they could collect insurance. So. And um, when with the. When he got caught for the the assault on the little sister. Uh, Marsha's little sister that was after his first crime in prison that was before if I'm not mistaken his first crime was because he, it went, said he, he go, meant two, well, two I, boys I think, well I he, think that, I think his first crime if I'm not mistaken though his first crime he went to go burglarize a house that was the, the properties was backed up to one another his his mom and dad's property was backed up to these other people's property. And he went to that house to rob it or whatever, steal whatever. And when he got there, he found out that someone was home. After he entered the house, someone was there. Oh. And a girl come after him with a hatchet. 
he ended up taking the hatchet, chopping the girl in the top of the head, threw her in a ditch and left her for dead. But she did not die. They ended up finding her, you know, later on about dead. She was in the hospital, da, 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 da. But that yeah, was, I believe, his first that. crime. Now, the first crime that you're talking about, um, when he was 11 and dropped out of school and was working yeah, on that's cars, he met... Danny and Marsh. Yes, that's he met them. And Marsh, Marsh's little sisters, who they all gang raped. All three yeah. of them done it. And But yeah, they were they too young. Marsh. Well, they were too young, I do believe, for, like, prison back then. Oh. So their parents hung them up in a barn and beat them for it. Oh my god! Yeah, I see here he got he got uh, beat by his parents. Yeah, I don't think he went to prison for that that crime or. And then he continued to burglarize homes alone because right. the trio broke. They broke up. Yeah, it was a lot of robberies, assaults, uh, gang rapes, um, different things with them kids, and, and all three of them had uh, troubled past. Um, if I'm not mistaken, Danny was raised by his dad. He didn't even have a mom. And his mm -hmm. dad would pay them to go out and steal, you know, cars or steal off of cars. And yeah. they would bring it back to uh, Danny's dad. And his dad would sell it and then they would split the money. <clears throat> so, he, you know, Danny's dad was a bad influence himself. So, and they come to find out, you know, for, for little kids... They're walking around with a few hundred dollars in their pocket. Of course, they, they think they've done something. So they their crimes just got more and more serious, more and more expensive. Um, and his first murder was while he was in prison. Was that his first murder or was it? That's the first murder he admitted to. I'll say it that way. I'm oh, not gonna, okay. Yeah, his first murder he, had, he admitted to was in prison. And like I said, it was to gain respect. Now, did you ever meet his daughter? No, I never met his daughter. I knew he had kids. Um, he was with this woman this week and another woman next week. So you kind of didn't keep up with his immediate family or whatever. You you know, it, it just wasn't like that. And then I, I found like upon researching him, all of his girlfriends, or I'm not sure how many times he was married. He was married quite a few times. I think at least four times. I was about to say at least four to five times, at least, maybe mm. more than that. But see, the thing about it is he would go get married, and he might have divorced one or two of them, but the rest of them he didn't divorce to go marry the next one. Oh, no way. So, you know, I don't know how many of them you would consider legal marriages, but he was married, or so supposedly married to four or five different women. Do you know how many kids he had and, and was he abusive towards his kids or his wives? Um, he never hurt none of his kids and he never hurt none of his wives. Never. He, but he, he killed his brother over a 25 cent cigarette lighter. Um, mm -hmm. He killed his, uh, I think she was a 13, 14 year old niece of his. He killed her because she went out and got drunk and he said that she wasn't being responsible. He wanted to teach her a lesson. So he took her and her friend back, raped them, and then killed them. Wow. Yes. And that's only, you know, that's just a couple of them. Um, he he killed friends, like uh, when he was burning barns, he had people that helped him. And when he thought that you was going to go tell on him, or he didn't have any use for you anymore, he would kill them. And he would bury them. Um, later on, of course, you know, he's running out of people to kill here. He starts going down the road, picking up hitchhikers, killing hitchhikers or, you know, just random people, people that broke down on the side of the road. He would stop on the side of the road and tell them, you know, I'll give you a lift to the store to call someone. And then he'd take them out in the woods and kill them. Do you think um, his children and wives knew about any of the murders or assaults that he was committing? Yeah, I wonder question. about his wife. I'll be honest <clears throat> with you. I've got to really question his wife, his kids. No, I don't think they knew. But his wife, I've got to to really, really question because all right, one of the killer or two of the killings, their next door neighbor was uh she was nine months pregnant. She had a two year old child. Um, they were next door neighbors. The wife and, and the next door neighbor were good friends. She left she left Pee Wee's house after having dinner that day. The next door neighbor did. She left mm -hmm. Pee Wee's house and they were never seen again. 
Well, mm. me, myself, I would have to question that. You know, Pee Wee was there. He was seen with him, not to mention the reputation he had. That would be automatically yeah. bells going off. But that would, I, I, as a wife, I would have to question that. You, He's out killing this many people. He's had to come on with blood on him before. Yeah, exactly. Um, and, and like, did your grandfather? Do you do you think like your grandfather knew what kind of a person he was, or did he tell Could, people about his murders? I, I'm or, not. I'm not sure of that, but I know my granddad always said he was a crazy little sob. You know, and that's. But Pee Wee, Pee Wee would go and tell people that he. You know, he killed someone or, or he might not have used the exact words murdered someone or killed someone. But, yeah, I took care of his ass. And, of course, you never seen this person that he supposedly took care of again. And he he would laugh about it or joke as in, you know, you don't know if you want to take him serious. Right. You know, is he joking? Just laughing. Um, he also, for the ones that don't know, he drove a hearse. That was his personal car is a hearse. And on the back of the hearse, it says, I will haul anything dead or alive. That's what the bumper yeah, we've said. got a picture of his hearse. Um, I'm not 100% sure um, how to share it. Let me see if I can share it. Um, so, yeah, he went, like, he went to work. That was his job. About it, didn't he? Not to me, his job was killing people. Mm. He would he would kill them, and if you had a car, he would take your car. And uh, he had a shop; they run a chop shop, so they would, you know, take the parts off of it, sell it, whatever, whatever. Mm -hmm. And nobody never seen you, your car, or anything to do with you again. He buried you in his own personal. He had his own personal cemetery in his backyard. That's wow. Cool. Um, someone asked in the comments, um, how many people did he kill? Well, he, he confessed to uh, like 105 to 110 people. <laughs> but as far as body wise, I think they found 15 bodies, if I'm not mistaken. But the way that they done it or the way that he done it is they gave him the, they, they gave him the electric chair. He was going to spend, you know, his last days on death row. Mm -hmm. And every time it come up to him to be executed, he would tell him where a couple more bodies was at. So they would postpone his execution. And then he would ride it out. Of course, when his execution got close again, he would tell him where a few more bodies was at. And he'd done that <laughs> all the way up to the point that he killed a man that was on death row. Um, mm -hmm. he, he, A man on death row had killed... a. Uh, owners of a mom and pop little store, a little gas station or whatever. And his, their stepson hired Pee Wee Gaskin, paid him $100 or put $100 on his canteen, must I say, for him to kill this man that, that murdered his parents. And uh, Pee Wee tried to poison him. Um, he tried all kind of different things to kill him. Finally, he had some C4 smuggled into the prison system on death row. And he made this makeshift telephone and when the guy picked up the so-called telephone to put it up to his ear Pee Wee Gaskins plugged in a, a 110 socket and it, uh, it blew him up and there was literally pieces all over the prison all over death row and after um, that after that is when they decided I don't care if you tell me where another body is we're, you're going to the chair and they executed him after that um, Victor asked what year this was in. Um, well, he was executed in what, 91? Yes. So he was executed in 91. I'm going to say probably the mid 80s. Somewhere around there is when they actually called him and charged him with it. You know, he actually was charged with it. Yeah, because it's not specific here on this, on, on this um, thing that I have. I'm not really sure exactly, you know, the exact dates of everything. I was a kid, so, but I'm going to say it was somewhere around the mid 80s. And he was killing people from 1950 on up to, you know, the 80s. 
when he was actually caught. Yeah, because it says in in September 1969, he found relief from um, his feelings and he was picking up the hitchhikers. Now, do you know if he ever murdered any of his family members or, or close friends? Well, uh, like I said, he, he uh, right. murdered his brother for a 25 cent cigarette lighter. Okay. Wow. Um, he, then- he killed his niece over because she was drunk and he wanted to teach her a lesson. Uh, that's another thing. This man had an excuse for every killing that he ever done. Not to say it was a good excuse, but he still had an excuse. Um, he also murdered uh, the congressman uh, or senator, or I think it was a senator's daughter. Um, mm-hmm. He murdered her and he put her in a septic tank and she was still alive when he actually put her in the septic tank. Oh my God. Um, the I next door neighbor, that. I'll even tell you how he killed mm-hmm. the next door neighbor, but I won't get too gruesome because you know, I don't want you to get flagged. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the next door neighbor was nine months pregnant. She had a two year old daughter. He took the, the woman, the pregnant lady and tied her up in the back of the car and he made her watch him rape her two year old daughter and the two-year-old daughter choked to death on his semen. Hmm. And that's how she died. He, then he took her and <laughs> raped her. not be graphic. Well, I, I, well, I, I could have said something else, you know? I mean, yeah. but he took her and he raped her also. And then he ended up beating her in the head with a hatchet, a brick, or, or something. But she was beat in the head, you know, after she was raped. The sick man. Disgusting. And that's how he killed both of them. And his reason for killing them is the the little girl was interracial. So he said that people wouldn't accept it because she was interracial. And he killed the mom because she slept with someone outside of her color. That was his excuse. I've also oh I've got a picture of her um, as well. I'm not going to show... A picture of the baby. If you ever got to look him up, look up Donald Henry Pee Wee Gaskins. He's a mass murderer and a serial killer. And the difference is one of them is people that you know. And the other one is people that you don't know. Mm-hmm. He done both. <clears throat> um, Did he ever have any friends help him? Well, he had lots of friends. And as a matter of fact, his friend that helped him is probably what got him caught. Because even the people was going to the police, telling the police, you know, look, this man's out killing people. Mm -hmm. But the police was like, no way. He's just, you know, talking big talk. No way. No way. So anyway, him and this one guy, um, he kills two or three people. I don't remember how many it is. He ends up killing them and he makes his friend help him dig the hole and bury these people that he just killed. And uh, the friends, the people that he just killed was people that was helping him steal cars and strip them down. He thought they was going to tell on him, so he killed them. Anyway, Mm -hmm. he tells his friend, you got to help me dig the hole. They dig the hole, and they go to bury him. And one of the guys had a brand new pair of tennis shoes. And the friend wanted the tennis shoes. So he's like, you know, you're helping me bury him. Sure, you can have the tennis shoes. Well, the later on, a little bit later, his friend ends up having a conscience and it starts eating at him and so he goes to the police and he tells the police about it you know me and me and Wee Gassens done killed these people when we buried them here well the police didn't believe him because the man wasn't all there so the police is like yeah whatever whatever we don't believe that so he right. ended up taking them shoes and giving them to the police <laughs> and the family of the murdered victims identified them shoes and that's what got them you know the investigation started Mm-hmm. So uh, he takes them back out there and he shows them where they buried these, you know, two or three people at. And um, from there, they just started digging up bodies one after another, after another, after another. I mean, some of the bodies was buried on top of one another. They didn't even have their own grave. Oh, my God. Victor so. was saying it's it was back then it was easy to get away with murder. Yeah, well, there's no such yeah. thing as DNA back in them days, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, you didn't have yeah, that was the 70s. Yeah, you didn't have the internet for things to get out like it does now. Is it was a, it was probably a lot easier to get away with murder back then. You're right. Um, I was also reading that he was uh, at one point hired as a hitman. Yeah, that's what I was gonna ask. 
Um, I don't really know too much about that part, so I can't really answer it. It don't surprise me. I know that he was, um, he served prison time with Al Capone for a short period of time, which is a big mob member. Yeah. Um, and he said that he learned a lot from Al Capone back in them days. Um, what else? I, I'm trying to think of some of the more stand out murders that he done. I don't yep. want to get into the gruesome things of when he's picking up the hitchhiker girls and stuff like that. That's just a little too yeah gruesome. <clears throat> also, um, like I was reading that a lot of his the women that he married and dated, um, or all of them were very young, and ended up murdering because they rejected him. They were all very young, like under yeah. seventeen. Yes, a lot of the girls was really young. Um, like I said, all of them was not young, though. He he murdered one girl. Her, I don't know what her real name was, so don't ask me. But uh, she was a lesbian woman. She was a big, manly-looking woman. Her She went by the name Clyde. And uh, Clyde picked on him all the time, told her that she was going to have his baby and, and so on and so on. <laughs> and he got offended by it because he didn't want people to think that he messed with people outside of his race. You got to realize back in this days. Mm. that was just a big no-no you know what i'm right. saying so yeah. he didn't want people to believe that about him so he went and he killed her and this is a big manly looking woman i mean she probably could have thumped his ass and broke him in two but he ended up shooting her in the back of the head and and raping her also and burying her and mm. um he put people in wood chippers oh my um, god he tied bricks to people and threw them in the river or well not the river but the the swamp and let alligators eat them i mean i, I was just gonna ask how do you get rid of 105 bodies he there was all kind of ways like i said he had his own graveyard in his backyard literally in his backyard mm. and then he used a hearse yes he used a hearse that's what that was his personal vehicle is a hearse he used um, it everywhere to go to the grocery store, to go to the doctor, to go kill someone, you know? So, he confide, confided in his daughter, too, about these murders? Um, His daughter has said so. Um, As far as his daughter, I believe... Yes, yeah, she no? testified against him in court. She did. She, she <laughs> testified for the prosecution in the court. Okay. Uh, personally, I believe a lot of what his daughter says. I believe she's whacked up in the head because of him. Definitely. But yeah. at the same time, I don't know how much is true because she is whacked up in the head. Yeah. Right. If that makes sense. That um I wonder how good of a parent he was. Do you happen do you happen to know? Was he from her, he was a great parent. He was he was a good when he was there. I, from my understanding, he was gone a lot because he was out on the road killing people. So yeah. he wasn't mm -hmm. in the house a lot, but when he was there, he seemed to be a loving, loving parent, loving dad. So, um, he was so evil when they, when they electrocuted him, his daughter had to have him cremated because the devil worshipers wanted his body because they thought he was, had mm -hmm. magic powers and stuff like this. So they had to have know. him cremated. That's crazy. Yeah. It's a super crazy yeah, story. I was also reading that the day of the, his execution, he tried to cut his wrists. Yes, uh, hours before his execution, he tried to cut his wrist so he could kill himself instead of them killing him. Yeah. He Have wanted to get the last kill. laugh, you know? Yeah. Well, um, another th I was going to ask something. Oh, um, you were telling me about a book? The book, The Final Truth, is the one you want. There's, there's probably four or five different books out about him. Don't get me wrong. There's there's lots of books out about him. But the one you really want to read is The Final Truth. That is written in his words. That's him telling you what he done, not someone else telling you what he done. Right. Yeah. So read that. It's very gruesome, but it's a very good book if you get into that kind of thing. Um, for me, I guess it because it was so close and I knew him personally, I I, I found it very interesting. Um, and then I was reading also that um, uh, the death penalty, he, what was he, he was doing stuff to try and avoid. 
Well, okay. When he first, when they first locked him up in the first couple of uh, murders they had him charged with, I'm not sure how many it was. So, but anyway, his first few murder convictions, the death penalty wasn't in there. So they could only give him life in prison. Okay. Yeah, it was restored after. Yes, after so the, long, um, they restored the death penalty, and his his ass was, like and, I said, up until he killed the man on, on death row. If he wouldn't have never killed the man on death row, they would have never e executed him, to be honest with you. <clears throat> um, What's your personal opinion? Do you think he actually murdered that many people, or absolutely he was just trying to become... I I can believe known as killed, a prolific serial killer. I can believe that he killed that many people. I don't believe he was just trying to get a reputation for himself or none of that crap. I can actually now I don't know that he did, but I can believe that he did. Um, so I've got written down here just some notes. Uh in in, in his backyard in the in his personal cemetery that you were talking about, uh they found the body of um Sellers, it doesn't give their last name. Some of them it does. Judy, Seller is the last name. Diane Neely, Johnny Knight, Dennis Bellamy, Doreen Dempsey, and her child. Um, they were buried mm. together. Yeah, they were all buried together. He also put the uh, senator or whatever, whoever he was, his daughter, he put her in the <laughs> septic tank. And the reason he done that is because he knew later on in life he was going to have to come clean and that was going to save him from the electric chair because they was going to want her body regardless, you know? Right. Mm -hmm. So that was like a bargain tool to give her body back for him not getting the electric chair at the time. Because, you know, every, every parent or every family member wants the body, whether they're dead or not. You yeah. still want to give them, you know, the proper burial, blah, 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 blah. So, yeah. That he put her in the septic tank, so he he called it a special place. But you know what the hell's so special about putting in the septic tank? And they went back years mm -hmm. later and and got the septic tank, busted the septic tank up, and and got her remains. Do you happen to know if he was still married when, um, when he got called? He yes, he was. He was still married. Yes. Oh, and I I don't know how much of it that you got into or whatever. At one time, he was uh, messing with this lady, dating this lady or whatever. And this lady got him to go into a jail in uh, Kentucky or Tennessee. I'm not sure which one it was. Anyway, he was supposed to go into a jail in Kentucky or Tennessee and give an inmate a carton of cigarettes. Back then, you was allowed to take cigarettes and give them to, you know, the inmates in jail. Mm -hmm. He goes and gives them the carton of cigarettes. He leaves there. Him and his quote unquote girlfriend go back to a motel room, come to find out in that carton of cigarettes had a, a razor knife in it. The man that they took he took them to um escape prison, escape jail. They charged Pee Wee with helping him escape. The man escaped jail and the and the woman that's supposed to be Pee Wee's girlfriend was actually boyfriend and girlfriend. You know, the one that was in jail and the one the girl. Yeah. So they ran off and left Pee Wee, and Pee Wee just kind of pretty much left holding the bag on that one. So did, that made him not trust women even more. Mm. How did how do you how do you think he got um everything into prison to build that phone bomb that he made? Well, you know and I know, and it's pretty much common sense guards. A guard was paid off to take some mail mm -hmm. to him that, you know, mm -hmm. just like it is now. How, how does phones get into prison? How do cigarettes get into prison? The guards. Right. Mm. Yeah. And, yeah, he uh, was uh, so high in power. Um, the, the way that he got, he was on death row. <clears throat> Excuse me. He was on death row and the way that he gained trust, he... He, he was a model citizen, you know, model prisoner or whatever mm -hmm. for a period of time. And he ended up getting a maintenance job on death row. So if, if you got to say your sink is leaking, he would be the guy to go in your cell and fix your leak. Mm -hmm. So the, the man that he killed on death row, 
he would break his pipes just so Pee Wee would come in there and see him. And Pee Wee would take him sandwiches, drugs, uh, whatever, whatever it was he wanted because Pee Wee was trying to become his friend. He wanted to be his friend. So he finally gained his trust. And, and from that point on, it was, you know, like I said, he was trying to poison him, doing all this different stuff, trying to kill him. Do you happen to know what he was using to poison him? I'm not sure what kind of poison it was. It was some kind of uh, horse medicine that's supposed to put horses to sleep. Oh, I, I don't know what it's called. So, you know, don't don't ask me a, a real name. I don't know. Yeah. But um, it was something to put horses to sleep is what it's he was using. It's basically the same thing they give you for lethal injection. It's really um, high doses of sedatives It's that they get. And so I imagine he was giving them sedative. They also give you potassium chloride. And um, there's another medication that they, they use. But Pee was so you sedate them heavily before you put them to sleep. So I assume that's what he was giving them. Wow. For this man to have, I mean, he dropped out of school at age of 11. So, you know, he didn't make yeah. it very far in school. This man was dumber than a bag of rocks when it comes to book sense. But he was a very, very intelligent man. Not yeah. book smart, street smarts. He was very yeah. much street smart. Um, he built a bomb in jail. Like I said, he it was a, a homemade telephone. After he blew the man up, he took the wire, rolled it back into his, his prison cell. Rolled it up, flushed it down the toilet, and walked out the prison like, what's going on? Like, he didn't know anything. <laughs> wow. You know, calm, cool, collective. Yeah. He would be the kind of man to go out and murder someone and then go sit down and eat at a buffet. It was like, you know, that didn't bother him at all. Um, was he? Do you happen to know um, if he was involved in, um, like, cannibalism? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And I, I that's the part of it I didn't want to get into because it's really gruesome. Yeah. Yes, he he yes. Boys and girls. Oh wow. he would make them eat their own body parts. Mm. So yes. That's scary. Very gruesome. I wish there was so much I could say on here, but I just don't want you to get flagged with the yeah. gruesome oh very gory parts. So they're not movies, only the books? Um, the book, The Final Truth, like I said, that's the one you want to look at. All this other crap on here is from someone else's words. Just like me getting up here telling you about it. Uh -huh. I, I could tell you a lot about him, but I can't tell you everything about him. You mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That that one book is him talking, him telling you himself what no he done and why he done it. Life? Yeah, that's what I was trying to ask. No movies that you know of? No movies that I know of. Um, they done a like a uh, little series, you know, like murder mystery series things about yeah. him, but not nothing, not no big Hollywood movies or nothing like that. Mm hmm. I would make a good horror movie. Um, I would actually, I, I've looked for them already. I would like to have the actual court documents from that yeah. trial. I would love to have it, but they don't have anything like that on the internet. I, I've looked for it already. No, no, I can't find anything it's on so that. Old. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming it's just too old. Mm -hmm. But there are a couple of little things on YouTube. Y'all can search him up and look through um, the things that I found on YouTube. Some of it's accurate, some of it's not. So you just have to guess at, you know. Yeah. What is and isn't and right. There's a lot of things. Like, C and I found while we were researching it, um, <clears throat> there was a lot of things that are left out. Yes. In one documentary, you might... Um, you get some from this one and a little from the next one? Yeah. 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 And some of them <laughs> says this thing about him, and then they're talking about the same story, but they, they change it up a little bit. Like, one of them says he's five foot four, and another one says he's only five two, and... Uh, there's just little different things. Not that none of that really matters, you know, but there are small differences in each little story. That's why I said, just go to his own story himself and read his words. And when you're reading that book, it's mm -hmm. written in redneck language. It's not prim and proper sentences. Like, you know, you would get out of a book. 
it's actually some of the sentence don't make sense. You have to read them three or four times to for it to compre you know, for you to comprehend it. Yeah. Because of his wordings are just so out there. I just look I'm just looking on Amazon right now to see if you can and buy the like buy the book. And like you said, it's five hundred dollars for the book. <gasps> yes, that's how but that book is that oh damn good. <laughs> Have you ever seen a book that's five hundred dollars like that? From a nobody, mm -hmm. you know, nope. this, this is a nobody. Yes, it I is. wonder you got to be able to order it from somewhere else. Hush, I, I suggest you go to the library and check it out. Oh, yeah, that's what Peach said. The library, yeah, I would go to the library and check it out and, and read it and take it back because you damn sure don't want to pay for it. No, no that's, that's a good idea. Ridiculous. Yeah. I've looked on eBay, I've checked Amazon, I've checked several places for this book and it's just i mean i found it but who's gonna pay 500 dollars for a book mm -hmm. yeah uh, Donald. does anybody have any questions um for georgia peach So, Georgia, you said that the killing spree lasted how many years? I'm not like really over sure. Seven? I, 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 oh, I oh yeah, here, definitely. Like six years? No, uh, definitely more, more than, than that. that. I, I, believe, I believe more than that. I think he was, I guess it was, what, around maybe 50, 1950, mm -hmm. when he started, you know, going to prison. So, that's when he killed his first person is in prison. Mm -hmm. So, I, I, I'm guessing around 1950. That's just a guess. And then he didn't get caught till the mid 80s. So you think of from the 50s to the mid 80s. Yeah, because it says that in 1955, his wife filed for divorce. So it was around that time. And yeah. like what gets me is, is he was in and out of prison so many times. Mm -hmm. And the first charges that, um, that were laid on him was. Um, for robberies and burglaries and those kind of things. So they could have kept him yeah. in prison then. And instead of letting him out, he hurt well, so many people. If I'm not mistaken, the attempted murder charge was the very, very first thing. Uh, yeah. Maybe. Well, was but he was, he was a murder. juvenile. He was a juvenile back then. Yeah. So they could only put him in juvenile till he turned 18 years old. And then they had to let him go. That's the way juvenile works, you know? Mm -hmm. And when he got out, of course, like I said, it was little things that kept going until it led up to big things. Yeah. He ended up going to prison as a man, but he went to prison as a man for like burning down barns or whatever, you know, peon bullcrap compared to murder. So someone asked, well, was his last prison sentence? Uh, his last prison sentence? Um, that's what, yeah, they asked. I'm going to say 84, 85 is when he was sentenced to prison for murder. That was his last sentence. That was his in last time going in there. Yeah, in 78 was when the death penalty was restored. So it was after that. In 1976, yep. him and his uh, friend were charged with eight counts of murder. Um, on May 24th, 1976, a jury convicted him of murder, of the mm -hmm. murder of Dennis Bellamy, and he was sentenced to death. Yes. So, it's insane. And you know what? I've never heard of him or... Like any well, of you, the live, people. you live in Canada, so you know it's understandable that you wouldn't hear of him. No, but we hear about I, a lot of cases in the states. That's yeah. where most of our murder cases come from. That, like the more popular ones that you hear about. I mean, we have serial killers here, and we have people that have done some pretty messed up stuff here. Like Paul Bernardo um, is one of them, but I've never heard heard of him. Well, I don't executed him. him. At one time, he had the name the most deadliest or the 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 meanest man in America is the way it was listed or or put out. 
He was the meanest man in America. He had killed more people than smallpox or whatever. The however they said that shit. I was like, wow, are you serious? Um, MK asked, do you know if he was related to any police officers? Because it sounds like he um, got a free pass. Not that I'm aware of. Well, like I said, the police didn't believe him. It, it wasn't that they gave him a free pass. They just didn't think he was capable of doing that. I mean, this is a little tiny ass man. I was just going to ask, do you think it was because of his size that they took him as a joke? I absolutely, I believe it was his size. And, and up until the point that he went to prison, it was, you know, Compared to murder, it was peon crimes, right? You know, going burglarizing something or stealing something or, or chop shops. That's all peon crimes compared to murder. See, they you're said, a midget. Are you intimidated by a guy that you can look eye to eye? No. Am I? <laughs> and I'm a midget. <laughs> well, yeah, it says that, that he was abused, that he was um assaulted when he yeah, was younger. Yeah, he was gang? assaulted. Well, he was assaulted at he, when, when he, he was beaten at home. Because he was the littlest kid, so he got beat by his mom, his brothers, his aunts, his step parents, blah blah blah. He was beaten. Then when he went to juvenile hall, yeah, that's what whatever for for chopping the girl in the head. They mm -hmm. said he said that he was gang raped. Yeah, and he right. wanted. He ended up escaping from there. Actually, the reform school. He ended up escaping from there, and he went on the road traveling with the, uh, the fair or carnival. And he met a woman while he was on, you know, traveling with the fair. They got married. So he come back home and he turned himself in to do his time. By then, though, he's, you know, a man. So mm -hmm. they sent him to jail. When he went to jail, they was raping him and stuff there. So he wanted respect. So he killed what was supposed to be the big, the big boss in jail, you know? Yeah. Wow. He was he was traded. Um the boss would, would trade him off for goods, let other people rape him, just different things. So he ended up um he stuck an ice pick through the man's eyeball is the way he killed him. Wow. Don't ask me how he got an ice pick in jail. I don't know that. Well, if he was a janitor and he had those uh special, you know, well, this is when he Jobs. was younger. When he was oh. younger is when he, he killed the inmate. Um, he stuck the ice pick in his in his eyeball. Oh, when he was younger. Okay. Um, does anybody want to come up on StreamYard? MK, yeah. do you want to come Good idea. I really wish y'all could see the hearse and stuff like that. It, it's just crazy to think that people drive a hearse around for their personal car. Yeah, you, uh, what did you say um, the bumper sticker said? The bumper sticker says, um, I haul anything dead or alive. <laughs> I will never forget that as long as I live because I was just learning how to read. I don't understand how hitchhikers were getting a vehicle like that. Well, back in them days, it was normal, you know, especially where we're at. We're on the coast. So you got hitchhikers co um, hitchhiking to the beach or are from the beach or whatever. It's, it was normal back then. Right. Um, see, can you post the stream yard link? Yeah, I'm doing that right now. And it wasn't only that there. Like I said, it, you know, if you're going down the road and your car broke down, he would stop and tell you, you know, I'll give you a ride to the gas station. So you didn't have cell phones back then. So you had to go use a pay phone. Right. So he would give them a ride to the pay phone, supposedly, but he would really go out and kill them. And then after he killed them, he would go back and get their vehicle that was on the on the road, broke down, and strip it down and sell the parts. So no one ever found them or their vehicle. Yeah. They just kind of vanished. Um, he done it not only in, in my state. He went to uh, Florida doing coastal kills, picking up hitchhikers, killing them. Georgia, he killed people. Um, the surrounding states, you know. Mm -hmm. So, but all of his uh, serious kills was people that he knowed, and they was all in the state of South Carolina. Most of them around Sumter, Florence, Columbia, those areas. Hitchhiking was more common than I remember. My dad telling me that he used to hitchhike when he was younger, and it was a common way for people to get around, mm -hmm. especially in places where. There is no public transportation. 
Well, I was um, a kid when my parents divorced and separated, and my dad got with this lady that lived on the lake, and uh, it's like 45 minutes away. Good, good little ride. And my dad took me up there, and um, she had a daughter my age. Me and her were the same age. I'm in second grade, mind you, or maybe first grade. I might have been in first, first or second grade. Anyway, my dad left. Him and his girlfriend was going to my uncle's house and made us stay there with uh, her son, which was older, and he was babysitting us. He was mean as hell to us. So I was like, bump this. I'm going to my uncle's house, too. I got me a hammer. Me and her went to walking down the main highway, hitchhiking down the main highway with a hammer in my hand. And an old man picked me up. He, he was a really nice man. But my ass jumped right up in the car with him, not thinking twice about it. Um, he asked me where we were going. I told him where my uncle lived at, showed him how to get there. He, we got to my uncle's house and uh, we get out the car and we go, you know, just go walking in, knocking on the door, whatever. And my daddy's like, how the hell did you get here? And I told him. Um, that man right there brought us here. So my dad went out there and told him and that old man told him, said, I seen these two little gals walking down the road hitchhiking with a hammer in their hand, but I had to pick them up. <laughs> my dad beat the shit out of us. Though. Oh my God. <laughs> That's crazy. But Hi ladies. Say, I, didn't, I didn't hit Hi. anymore. Hello. Yeah. How you doing? It's, it's a shame when all these helpful people are trying to help you and one person out of uh, bad apple spoils it for everybody. It's yeah. Good. And then yeah, there's so copycats. Bad. People people hear these stories and then try to outdo the other people. That's yeah, crazy. That's cool. Well, I not never... being ugly, so you got to get deep to get in this in here with me because I, you know, it, I wasn't there to experience him killing them, but I know all about it. Yeah. I can't believe the guy killed 105 people. I can. I can believe there was actually Where more to be honest. Yeah. yeah. Even more, I can believe there's even more. I mean, you know, he didn't it's, confess to more, but I can believe there's more. I'll tell you, after this stream, I'm gonna I'm gonna watch a documentary on this guy. Yeah, go look him up. He he's there again. What you find on the internet, you're only finding bits and pieces of each story is the truth, and they don't get into the real gruesome part. Yeah, go find the book, The Final Truth. That gets into the gruesome deep details of what he done to people. Yeah, that's crazy, eh? Yeah, I mean, he gets into exactly how he killed them, what they saying, what they doing. He gets deep. So, Georgia, deep. so, Daisy, how old were you when you met this guy? Um, I, Like I said before, I don't think I never not knew him because I was so wow. young when my, when my, you know, him and my granddad knew one another. So, I think young. I've always knew him, but wow. I'll I'm going to say seven, eight, nine, somewhere around there is, you know, when he went to prison. I was around that age. That you could have been, like, in the back of your mind that you possibly could have been one of his victims or your grandpa. Oh, hell yeah. I believe, I believe any, especially young kid could have been a victim. Um, my grandpa, right. I, to me, as far as his... Uh, the people that he knew that he killed, his more serious kills, there again, like I said, he always had a reason to kill people. So I don't think my grandpa ever done anything to him to uh, offend him or upset him or had any direct business dealings with him. You know what I'm saying? Not shady yeah. business deals. Um, my, Yeah, he's working on my granddad's car. My granddad paid him for him. They had those kind of deals, but it wasn't nothing shady. It doesn't sound like it took very much to set him off. No, no. So would but, um, he, would, sorry, would he kill just that random? Yeah. yeah. No rhyme or reason? He like would, I said, he killed his brother over a 25 cent cigarette lighter. He, he had an reading, excuse for everything. Yeah. You from... were reading that he would get like a feeling, almost like anxiety, yeah. and until he killed somebody, that wouldn't go away. He said it that he called them bothersomes. Oh. Or yeah. something like that is what he called them. But possessed. Yeah. And he said that's the only way was to go kill someone. That's the only way he could get that feeling to go away. And he said that um, when, it, when it started, he would go out and kill someone. And he would feel all right for, you know, a month or two. And then he would get that feeling again. And But the more he killed, the more often the feeling come. Yeah, because they kill and then they have a period. Serial killers have a period that they kill and then they have what's called a cool off period. Right. Where they'll stop for a while and then 
for but what like I, I said, you know, when they said, get the urge again, they start. He said the more that he killed, the more often the urge come. So he yeah. went from killing once a month to, you know, once a week. And you then know, once a day, you know, just he got more aggressive. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, Todd. There's no stopping this guy. No, there was he. He was a if, sick if he wouldn't man. have let that man keep them shoes. That man, he would still be probably out killing somebody if he wasn't dead. Hi, Todd. Uh, How are you feeling, hun? Oh, okay. That's good. Where'd you go for supper? B dubs. Mm. Uh, Texas right off was too bad. What did you have? Uh, I just got me some wings. <laughs> That's what I had today, too. Buffalo wings. That sounds good. Yeah. Yeah. I thought. Not as good as a damn steak. Ooh. Oh, that steak that steak I, sounds good. That parking lot was so fucking full. I want me a T-bone or a ribeye over medium. <laughs> and a yes. baked potato and a side salad. Yeah, did you bring us anything, Todd? <laughs> I only ate like oh, five of my wings. I bought the rest of them all. You didn't pick Tina and I up on your way. I'm disappointed. <laughs> yeah. I can't even. I want to turn vegetarian after the story of this guy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm never yeah. turning vegetarian. Todd, did you hear their story? Yeah. I've been it's crazy. For two days now. Um, yeah. yeah. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna say I wanna tell you a story, MK, that about him that and try try to leave as much of the gruesome part out as I can. So mm -hmm. but you like still the get first those. time. Um <laughs> he picked up he picked up uh some hitchhike, some girls, young girls hitchhiking. Yeah. And he took them back and he was, you know, raping them. And the girl started crying and, and carrying on and he was sucking her boob. I, I'm quit dog. And anyway, the girl was crying as he was doing that. And he's like, oh, what's wrong? You want some too? He took his teeth and bit it and pulled it up. <gasps> then he Ooh. took a knife and sliced it off and then shoved it down in her mouth and told her to eat it. Whoa. Well, thank you for sparing us the details. Wow. That just <laughs> chilled down my throat, my uh, back. Yeah, that that's. He done boys the same way, but not with their boobs. So with what their, they, what their do they part. call that? A, they call that a sadist or something? I don't know what it was called. I just called it gruesome, sick, nasty. This guy's got to be the worst killer I've ever heard of in my life. Um, do you think yeah, he's bad. Like, what his preference was for people that he would he would murder? Like, was it male, female? He didn't have. He he would rape men just as quick as he would. Well, I, I say men, more like kids, teenage boys, young boys. He would rape them just like he did, you know, a woman. Praying on a week, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, he he. <clears throat> He wasn't prejudiced to who he killed at all. Isn't it kind of contradictory to say, I don't believe people should like interracial relationships and then go and do what he did? I'll agree with you 150%, but mm -hmm. I don't think it was so much, you know, back then interracial relationships was like closet, you know, just like gay people in the closet. You couldn't flaunt it around town, especially down in the South where I'm from, you know, down where I'm at. The Klan used to be a big thing back then. So yeah. you didn't flaunt being in an interracial relationship. Your ass stayed in the closet back then. I and I believe different. that, I believe that, you know, people saying that he didn't want to get the reputation for it because it was just a big no no. Yeah. Was he in an interracial um, relationship? Or some no, um, I, yeah. not not necessarily a relationship, no. But he raped. You would assault them. Yeah. Well, he raped. Mm -hmm. He raped the black girl. The the big black manly looking girl was a black girl. Okay. And so, she's the one that kept saying she was gonna have Pee Wee's baby. Da 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 da. So he killed her ass because mm -hmm. he didn't want people thinking that he was gonna have a black baby. Oh, I see. That he was raped her though. This, this he raped story. her as he yeah. killed her. The the pregnant lady. She was a white lady, but she was pregnant by a black man. Her child was interracial. The little two-year-old, did he rape to death? Mm -hmm. she he raped was also in, Yes, he raped her to death. Mm -hmm. Wait, wait, wait. A two-year-old? A two-year-old, yes. A two-year-old wow. kid. And while her nine-month pregnant mom was tied up in the back of the hearse and made her watch. What's, can, you, can you talk about his uh, childhood growing up? He said he was abused, but can you kind of... Recap a little bit. Um, his mama beat like, him. 
pretty much it was just he was neglected. He he was beat a lot. Um, he was cussed at a lot verbally, physically, mentally. Was he raped, sexually abused in jail or anything like that? Yeah. Um, was there like it, a, a main event in the reform triggered? school? Yes, but I don't think his like his brothers didn't rape him or nothing like that. It wasn't like that. When he started going to juvenile halls, is when he started getting raped. And I found like I found that kind of surprising. Usually, when people or when you hear of serial killers, there's usually a history of like sexual abuse and physical abuse yeah. and for a long time, and like they're really, really disturbed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, obviously, I mean, it, it just sounds to me like he got a good ass whooping. He probably he needed a, a few more good ass weapons. Obviously, yeah. no ass weapons didn't do him no good. And he drank kerosene, and they think kerosene that kind of had something to do with it. Yeah, when he was yes. a year what? old. Yeah, yeah, like a year old, he drank yeah, a bottle of kerosene. And Did I'm not going to blame stuff on Streamyard. To well, me, to me, you. that's that's just an excuse because all right, if you drunk a thing of kerosene at a year old. And you, you're you going to blame that for you being the way you are. What you started killing at five or six or, you know, a lot I'd, sooner than, than he was. I guess his name would have a lot to do with it. Probably picked on from the moment other kids could speak. Pee wee, pee wee, pee wee all the time. Well, see, that's where his name come from is because he was the little kid. His name is Donald Henry Gaskins as far as his name. And his he wasn't a Gaskins, he was actually a parrot. Okay. Is where he he was born as a parrot, which is his um mom's boyfriend's name. He didn't find out his name was Gaskins until he was seven, eight, nine years old, you know. Mm -hmm. He was a little yeah. bit older when he found out that this man, Gaskins man, was actually his daddy and not parrot. But he was the littlest one, so everybody started to call him Pee Wee. And it just everyone picked it up. So that's where the P, the name Pee Wee come from. It became a nickname, and it kind of stuck with him. And and even all the way up to death row, it it that was his name. I find it also almost surprising that he never did anything to his wife or his or or his daughter. Do you know if it was it just I know he had a daughter and I know he had a son. I know he had a daughter and I know he had a son. I don't know about any if he had two daughters or three daughters or five sons, but I know he had at least one of each. Then he didn't abuse them. No, he didn't abuse them. He didn't kill them. He didn't I'm not gonna say he was a great dad by no means, but I, I think he was a good dad when he was there. Todd, do you know any anybody like that or hell no? <laughs> I've never. I. I I've yeah, been, me neither. I know someone that was murdered, but I. I've never met anybody that later well, found is, out that they were no, psycho. Don't know no psychos like that. I. I can believe everything that he said, but of course, <laughs> being a kid, I would have never ever thought in a million years that this man's some mass murderer, serial killer. It just, you know, as a kid, you don't think about shit like that. No. No. But I know in the back of my head, my granddad, I'm not going to say my granddad knew. My granddad sensed that this man's not a good man. Maybe my dad, my granddad did know, but he didn't have no proof or whatever. Yeah. I, you know, I don't know. But I know <clears throat> that my granddad at least sensed. Not to leave you guys alone with him? Exactly. Don't Don't let this man be around your kids or grandkids. Yeah. So did your your grandfather like when he did he ever come over to talk with your grandfather? Your grandfather send you in the house? Yeah, we always had to go inside, and he he's never a pee wee never ever come in our house in my grandparents' house, not that I'm aware of anyway. And you know, like on the weekends, all of us grandkids gather at grandma's house, right? And that's where we spend our weekends at. And back in my day, as kids, we had to get out in the yard and play. It wasn't no sit inside all damn day long. But we would be outside in the yard playing. If Pee Wee pulled up, my granddad tell all of us grandkids, the boys yep. and the girls, not just the girls, the boys mm -hmm. and the girls, we all had to go inside. He knew, eh? It, it, I don't, like I said, I don't know if he knew or if he sensed or 
I don't know. There was just something about him that my granddad wouldn't let us play in the yard when he was around. Um, at the age of seven, were you taller than him? <laughs> I was probably about as tall as him. That's why I keep telling you that man was about five foot tall. Wow, I was, wow. Yeah, I was I was probably pretty close to his height. But you got to realize also when you're a kid and you look up at someone, which he was a short man. Like when I was a kid, I looked up to my granddad. He looked like the damn Jolly Green Giant. He's like six foot two. So mm -hmm. he looked like the damn Jolly Green Giant. And you look at Pee Wee and it's like looking at a kid with a mustache. <laughs> reminds me of something. Do you think he murdered people because they didn't take him seriously because of his height, and he murdered them as if to say, "I oh, fuck you." I do. Me too. Um, I think he liked control, so, and he didn't like to be picked on because you know he's been picked on all of his life. So maybe someone cracked a joke, called him, you know, Pee Wee, and he took it the wrong way as taking it puny and i don't know i don't know I, I don't know the man was just off his rocker could he could he hold um a, co a coherent conversation with you like with you i mean i know you didn't really talk so much because your grandfather wouldn't let you around him but was he slow no to me i mean he he's got a he's got a way more southern draw than i got i know i'm a country girl but this man's like way worse than i am <laughs> mm -hmm. but yeah he can like i said he he was a very smart man when it comes to streets but he wasn't very educated like he can't tell you eight plus nine was you know 17 or, or nothing like that he can't do any of that but he can tell you why a car does this or mm -hmm. how to grow yeah. that or you know stuff like that he, he was street mm -hmm. smart not book smart todd do you have any questions And I believe Pee Wee was one of those people that was kind of like a a jack of all trades kind of guy. Yeah. I believe he was that kind of person. You know, if you got a plumbing problem, he knew how to fix it. If you got an electrical problem, he knew how to fix it. If you had a park car problem, he knew how to fix it. He was that kind of person. No, he couldn't go be a scientist or a doctor. He wasn't that kind of smart. Yeah, because you said he knew everybody in the community, right? Yeah, everybody knew him. Everybody. Well, it, I'm, people even I'm now. Saying, even now, do you know people still talk about him? I was just going to say, if you go watch videos on YouTube and you just read a few of the comments, you don't have to go through many of the comments to find someone that says, my grandpa knew him. My my um Really? My grandma knew him. My yeah, uncle guess. knew him. Yeah, worked with him and this and that. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah, because the power of the internet, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, you were saying, Peach, that if he didn't have any like involve anybody else in his in his crimes, that you don't think he would have been caught. I really don't think he would have been caught because even though he was boasting about you know killing these people, no one took him serious because he was just a little peon. He hmm. was a nobody, you know. I mean, he was known for petty crimes, but not not nothing that serious. And yeah. I don't I don't believe that people would have thought he would have done anything like that. He was just he was the little guy and he wanted to feel like the big man on campus. Yeah. Well that's why he committed the murder in prison, right? Was to get Yeah, well that's exactly he knew that if he power, killed the yeah. boss he, he wanted people to quit raping him in prison, he said. That was his words, not mine. So if he killed the boss, the big man that would make him the power man now because yeah. everybody's going to fear him. And back then there probably wasn't as many uh, murders in the small prisons either and stuff, right? Uh, there was probably a whole lot more murders than we know about, but back then, what did they care? The, the prison looks at it as one less mouth that I got to feed. Yeah, but most of the prisoners would be petrified of him because he, they would know he's like a um, crazy serial killer, you know? Yeah, it, well, when you go in there and kill the biggest guy in prison and you're only five foot tall, uh -huh. uh, it's easy wow. for you to kind of take control or take the power. Do you think after being in prison or like reform school um, so young that made him become institutionalized? I think he was. I, I think he was. Um, I think he was whacked up before he even made it to reform school, to be honest with you. I, yeah. 
he was going to be in prison one way or another. He just happened to be not old enough at that time. Do you think that made him worse, though? Because you said um, he was they, they were gang raping him in prison. I don't know that it made him worse. Um, oh, yeah. I think a gang rape. To me, to me, that's the places like that teach you how to be a criminal and get away with it. Yeah. They don't refer, you know, they don't, they don't teach you how to be a better person. They just teach you how to be the criminal to break laws and get away with it, not get caught. Todd, have you ever been to prison, hun? Yeah. I've been in jail one time, nine and a half hours. Well, we know your institutionalized speech. <laughs> probably I, I didn't hear you said you say you have been, yeah? No, 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 no. No, you haven't been? No, no, no. <laughs> Boss um, is one of the good guys. Have you ever like, been arrested for anything yeah. or no? You knock on some damn wood. No. No. Good. No, Todd no, talks his way out of it. Todd, Todd don't get caught. You know? Good for you, Todd. Well, <laughs> I've been in jail one time for nine that, and a half hours, that's and that why was quiet. long enough for me. Didn't you get takeout for supper? You learned your lesson? Who, me? Did I get takeout yeah. for supper? Yeah. Yeah, I ended up eating some cat and dog. <laughs> <laughs> Chinese food, in case y'all don't know. That's Chinese you got, food. You got lucky. <laughs> yeah, that's what we had. Cat and dog tonight. I had bourbon <laughs> chicken with shrimp Chinese fried rice. Oh, that sounds good. Yeah. I had that last night. It was good. Chinese food. Chinese food. What'd you have? Stir fry. Ooh. Veggie on rice. Pretty no good. meat. No meat. Usually I have uh, beef, but like little steak. That strips. sounds good. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's what the kids got. One kid, one kid got beef on a stick, and the other one got chicken on a stick. I call it rat <laughs> on a stick. At a Chinese <laughs> restaurant. Yeah, at a Chinese restaurant. Yeah. It comes, on, comes on a stick. Yeah, it comes. You can get it on the stick here. Yeah. Really? That's yeah. Cool. Oh my god. Yeah, chicken on a I stick didn't or know beef that. on a stick. It, yeah. does, it, does it come on a chopstick? No, it's just like one of them, um, like a kebab stick. Yeah, like you go make kebabs. Big... It's one of those. Kind oh, of those. Was it a kebab? No, uh -uh, it just had meat on it. No, no Chicken vegetables. Because those are good. Yeah, well, I, we make those at home a lot, but I went to so, the night. Have I was you guys ever had Korean barbecue? I haven't. No. Oh my gosh, it's so good. I had that before. The ribs. Okay, we're gonna the go. Ribs? Okay. I had that. The one where you sit down in front of the grill. Yeah. Like the personal tables. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty good because it's like little thin pieces, so you, you get to try a bunch of small things. It's not like you're sitting down and prefer a big meal, right? I can speak Korean too. Can you? Really? A little bit. Say hi. To Say me. Who? Chum B. Who? <laughs> <Say who? laughs> <laughs> um, what was I gonna? Add? So, did you pick this topic, uh, Daisy? Yeah, yeah. She's I didn't necessarily it pick it. I just gave her an idea, and they was like, "Oh, let's do that." <laughs> this, this is cool. So what made you guys do this? Because Peach suggested it to us, and I, I researched it a little bit, and she was talking about and, it a little bit. And, I and thought, we didn't know oh, about it. Really I mean. didn't know about this case. This is they really wanted about to him. do a crew, a crew try, uh, damn, true crime channel. So I was just yeah, giving them she, topics. You know, here, you can check this person out and that person out. I've actually gave them, like, a couple of names, actually. Mm -hmm. And, well, um... Yeah. Then I we come into this in here and and I gave them a little bit of the backstory and they I guess they liked it. They laughed it up. Yeah, this is <laughs> cra this this one's crazy because like the craziest story I ever heard was I think Ed Gline or something his name mm -hmm. is. Yeah, uh, from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre and all those movies are mm -hmm. based on him and this guy sounds even worse. Uh, Pee Wee's pretty. Who was the other one that would kill the people and eat them to um Jeffrey Dahmer? Yes. Yeah. He was worse than him. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty crazy. So you got an endless amount of information because there's like so many, so many people like this guy nowadays. Yeah. Well, who's the next topic? Like, do you guys got it planned? Um, well, I guess it depends on how often they want to do their show. Pardon? 
Like like um, Peach said, it depends how often. See, there there's five different topics they're wanting to discuss: kidnapping, murder. Um, what was some of the other ones? Uh, unsolved cases. Yeah, yeah, unsolved. unsolved. Cases. So I told them like, notorious. yeah, yeah. So e either if like if they're going to stream five days a week, yeah, five days a rotate, week at least. Yeah. <laughs> oh my well, goodness. I mean, if they do, no. you can do like one of them today, one on Tuesdays, one on Wednesdays, so on, so on. And yeah. then the next week you start back over again with, you know, the same murders. Group. Right, right, with, right. Right. So like have a, a category uh, on that a set day. Yeah, yeah, per day. Yeah. Well, there's there's what three of you guys doing this? So you guys got three days yeah. each. No, that's three. That's crazy. This is like a really good. Um, <clears throat> See, story I'd rather. That I don't think too many people have ever heard of. Um, I I'm would just, rather I'm just like them hang around people. I'm just, I would here. rather like do the research together because, like I said, because. Like Sarah, all right. I, I don't remember who were y'all talking about. Oh, the Chris Watts case. Yeah. yeah, Sarah. I mean, I've looked into that case more than one time, and I know a lot of stuff about it. But Sarah and C looked at it totally different than I did. Like I never even thought about the girlfriend being involved in it. I, oh, I mean, for sure. I, I, I thought she might know. But I didn't ever look at her as being involved the way Sarah and C did. I just looked at him because I know he was a cold-blooded killer. There was no ifs, ands, or buts about it. And as long as he went to prison, I was satisfied. You know. And I mm -hmm. think that's what the police said too. That's the guy that killed yeah. his family, and the cops came into his house, and he's like, yeah. "Oh, look, here's her phone." Yeah, she left her ring. She's taken off with the kids. I didn't even hear about it, his girlfriend. But that's why I wanted yeah. all three to do it together. Because like I said, mm -hmm. they're looking at things different than I am. And I'm looking at things different than they are. Yeah. They might see something that I don't see and vice versa, you know? And if someone wants to suggest a case that they, they would like us to do, they yes. can. You know what you guys should do? Is mm -hmm. um, say, say you have everybody that comments. Uh, pick one, and then whichever one gets the most likes, like do a poll. Okay, say, yeah. That's say that's these, these yeah. are these are the you know three people we're gonna talk about. Uh, let's have uh, everybody in the comments post on this video. Who who would you like to hear for next week? Mm -hmm. uh, Good idea. Yes, well, I would like to do like murder, kidnapping, unsolved cases, like one day unsolved cases. Um. Abductions, you know, kidnappings or whatever. Yep. Yeah, you know, and uh, like, um, I don't know if you guys have ever watched, um, but there's a I can't remember his name. Has anybody seen the missing four one one? No, I don't no. think so. No. Okay, so there's a uh, a documentary that I'm going to get you guys to watch, and uh, we could possibly talk about that. It's people that go missing in national parks in the states. And there's hundreds of thousands of people that have gone missing in these national parks. Yeah, I, I would love to do stuff like I've that. I've heard about that. Uh, what is the guy's name? Uh, hold on. Uh, he's a, I think he used to be a police officer. Um, that's now retired. His name is on the tip of my tongue. Um, one second. 411 killer? The missing four one one. I'll look it up. I think you can watch one of there's two there's two movies. One of them you can watch on do you have YouTube premium? I don't. Okay, so I think you can watch one yeah, of them. National free. Parks. What did you want to know? The the person's name that yeah, convicted? David Pol Polites or something like that, or um Pilates. David Pilates. Yeah, that's his name. I think he's the author, though. Yeah, but he's the he's also the one that like um, they don't they don't keep a log of how many people go missing in their parks. He's been keeping track of these people that go missing and like the information um, surrounding their their disappearances. Oh, these are unsolved. Yeah, hundreds of thousands yeah, I, of people. I, Wow, you and, know what? Um, like he's almost gone in the direction of maybe something paranormal happening. Mm -hmm. 
Hey, maybe. Um, can somebody post the link again? I gotta bounce out for a second. Yeah, of course. Okay, yeah, sure, I'll post it. I got gotcha. you. Oh, you got me. Hey, uh, and I didn't know this. Um, in uh, BC, there's a highway where a bunch of native, mostly yeah. women. Yeah, uh, the Highway of her. Tears or something like that. Yeah, what's it called again? Highway of Tears. Mm, I'd never even heard of Is that, that until last year. I think so because I think me and you spoke about it. Yeah, we should we should talk about that too. That's like what you're talking about now. Yeah. That's crazy. Eh? There's so many uh, evil around me. They got a lot There's of haunted so many places like that. that. You don't hear about. Yeah, yeah it's hear. called the Highway of Tears. It's a 725 kilometer corridor of Highway 16 between Prince George and Prince Rupert. Um, which has been the location of many missing and murdered indigenous women beginning in 1970. Huh. Mm -hmm. That sounds interesting. Yeah. So what's the next episode topic going to be? We're not, have guys... uh, we haven't planned it yet. Oh, I see. Oh, by the way, you played We're the wrong. by the seat of our pants tonight. Like we, we put this together in what, 15 minutes? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, here. Um, <laughs> one sec. Yeah. I'll be right back. Okay. And guys, I think um, either oh boy. you two together or us three together, we mm -hmm. need to do like little 10 or 15 minute videos, not going live, but videos to put on there so um, it would yeah. get circulated. Because yeah, like I told BJ, them. nobody wants to sit and watch no hour, two hour live stream. That's just not, you know. Are you kidding me? This is awesome. We got like first hand accounts. Yeah. But I'm saying a lot of people's not going to sit and watch no long ass live stream. Yeah, like no, here. I understand. So some of the, you know, yeah. I, and I'm not saying like do topics, just put out like, you know, our next topic's going to be this here at about this person, about, you know, this time, da 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 da. Tune in and put it out kind of like a commercial advertisement. There you go, advertisement. So it can get circulated. To get you more subs and likes and and whatever. Well, to get you more subs I'm okay right now. And whatever. If you want, so okay. well these these guys these two got it covered. I seen their videos. Did you see the intro? Okay right yeah, I watched it. Yeah. Okay. Um, he wants us to play our our, our other video. So. I will do that. I know that we're going to learn as we go. Yeah. Oops. Look at me go. That's sick. I know. <laughs> so you just, I like someone special make it for me. You just add the topics into this and a couple pictures. Yeah. And then talk over it quickly or don't even bother. And then he just talk about it later on in the evening. I need some help with that. So. Hi, Jay. <laughs> Jay, are you old enough to be in here? Did you see the viewer discretion is? I'm only going to warn you once. That's sick. That's nice. Ooh, there you go. Professional. Ooh, professional. Big YouTubers. <laughs> Sarah, personally, this is just my That's opinion. Wicked. I think it would be better for you to do the shorter intro coming in. Yeah. And they're longer when going out because some people don't want to sit through a long intro and they get they change off before they even get to see, you know, your show. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if they miss the ending of it, it's no big deal. You, you know, you just want them there for the show itself. So I would do this the low the shorter ones first. Yeah. And then the longer one last. I got you, Dodd. And that's just my opinion. Well, I think I think normally, um, like if you see all the YouTubers doing it, they use OBS. And then you, you can have like a set schedule where you have an intro, you have this, you play this, 
you know, well, you I think an intro straight. is good. I think an intro is really good. It gives the people time to come in yeah. there. Yeah, what the way you did it, Sarah, works though. Okay. Like the way you started it, you could just do it like that, and it looks just as good as long as you have it queued up before you go live. Like I did tonight. Yeah, like you did tonight is perfect because okay. the other the other people you see with all that, they're all using special software and they have it all queued up and advanced. And it's complicated. Yeah. yeah. Right? I don't know enough about this yet. Yeah, I don't even. Yeah. But you don't need it because the way you you just did that, you just do that all the time. So right now, if you wanted to show some pictures while you're talking, you share the screen. Yo, I need a wrench. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Todd's always have to ask for Give a wrench. the boss a, a wrench. Yeah. Okay. I, we got somebody in the chat now. I need it. Need it. Todd, I'd give you a, I'd give you a wrench, but I can't. Yeah. Yeah. I don't never ask for a wrench either. I get I it or I don't, but I'm not going to ask for it, you know? I need one. <laughs> Poor I'm Jay. A, I'm asking. Thank you, rapper Jay. How about we leave him until he acts up? Nah, that dude troll. So he doesn't make no no more diss videos. Rapper J He's going to make those anyway, so it don't really matter. You don't have to do anything to Rapper J for him to get there and talk shit about you. He, he's a very evil person. He likes, he's, look, he likes the intro. Well, he's not a good person. I'm sorry, but he's yeah, he not needs, a good person. I was watching one of his videos. He even admitted Rapper that. Rapper J, are you going to troll? Because if you're going to troll, you're not going to be here long. He's making a vi He'll make a video about you tomorrow talking shit. Trust me. I hope not. Hey, Peach. He... I was watching one of his videos, his apology video, and he, he even said that. Um, the he, thing he, is, his apology video, MK, he apologizes why he's still talking shit. <laughs> I know. I, I questioned him on it, and then he laughed at me. Yeah, because it's not really an apologize video. Chat, we should go over to C's, um, C's channel. Okay, Rapper J, thank you for not yeah. trolling. You can stay as long as you're not trolling, hun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's not going to troll you, but that don't mean he won't troll me or Todd or the next person, you know? None of the people in the channel, <laughs> please. Yes. Thank you, Rapper J. Um, this is the serious oh, channel. This is good, though. This is awesome. So, see, do you want to go live on your channel? We'll, we'll all jump over to yours. We'll end this live stream. Yep. Yeah, yeah I want to do that. Okay, so let's do that. that short, this video, it's already an hour and a half. So Yeah. Perfect. Okay, right. well, let's do that. Let's close out this and um we'll go, we'll jump over to your channel and we'll we'll chat. Okay, let All me right. po let me post the link before you close it and then okay. highlight it, Sarah. Okay. So, anybody watching can uh follow? Yes. Be good mod, eh? Yeah. All right, we're going Perfect. to C's channel, right? CC. Yeah. Our yes, communications right. manager. <laughs> Hey, I this bet. is this is cool though. It's really good. Um, I enjoy this. It wasn't bad for our first time, right? Oh, it's great. <laughs> no, I was a little nervous. I'm not going to lie about it. So, oh, but... don't be nervous. Me too. I was nervous. I, well, I'm shy though. Never I'm not really a shy you. person. You're shy. It's just Sarah says she's shy. She took over. <laughs> yeah, everybody here, you already know. What's, Never what's... in a million years did, did I think I would be of... on on YouTube. No, you I never thought. I never thought Victor, I'd be doing we're this. Gonna go, we're gonna go over to C's channel. So, um, we're gonna post uh, C's channel. Come over there. There it is. Okay, bye everybody. Beyond the truth. <laughs> Thank you guys. Bye, beauties. Round of applause. All right. Yeah. See you in a Thank few. You. See you bye. next okay. time. Bye. Bye. Bye.